was Juan Valdez, and uh, I grew up in Santa Fe, uh, New Mexico. I um, was, uh, when I was young, I was an altar boy at Guadalupe uh, Elementary School, and uh, I felt that uh, I felt really good because, you know, I was going to church and my uh, father uh, ran a restaurant and he was a good businessman. And uh, so I, um, but once in a while we would uh, steal the wine from the priest and go get a buzz. And, uh, you know, that's when I first uh, kind of started drinking. Um, and, uh, as I, uh, <clears throat> uh, as, as I grew up, um, my father was a functional alcoholic. Um, you know, he used to drink almost every day, and and uh, uh, we uh, were kind of respected. And um, and then that all changed because uh, one day the police came knocking on our door, and uh, they asked. They had a search warrant, and they arrested my father uh, for uh, uh, three joints. He was for selling three joints. It was an undercover uh, operation, and uh, and he went to prison for three years for three joints in 1962. Now I know a lot of people find that hard to believe, but that really happened back in those days. In my family, drinking was always encouraged. Uh, you know, uh, our parents were role, role models. My father drank and my mother, uh, she uh, took pain pills. And everybody in the neighborhood drank. We, uh, you know, it was a way of life. I mean, I could go to any, anybody's house and start drinking and, and that, that was encouraged. And uh, so, you know, um, if your parents encourage you to uh, uh, drink and drug, then you're going to become an alcoholic and an addict. And uh, that's precisely uh, what I did. When my father went to prison, um, I, uh, I, I, I was kind of angry and uh, my mother started drinking a lot and she uh, started to bring men around and and it was uh you know it, it was sad it was uh and it created it created a lot of anger in me and and i and frustration so the way to deal with that is i started uh, sniffing uh, gas and sniffing glue and huffing um, and i started hanging around with with people like me who had some kind of problem in their family or there was no control, and we all just got high. And then as we grew up, we uh, started smoking pot, drinking beer. From there we went into heroin. From there we went into uh, uh, cocaine. Uh, one of my, the guys I grew up with, uh, he ended up uh, uh, getting addicted to, to this, uh, to sniffing and he ended up uh, in the state hospital because uh, he ended up uh, killing his mother, stabbing her 22 times and throwing her outside uh, the door and leaving her outside. I had uh, people in, in my neighborhood who uh, were gangsters or pachucos and we respected these uh, gangsters. We, we all wanted to be like them. And so I started to hang around with older guys and, and they were uh, smoking pot. And, and then one day they invited me to uh, go with them to Albuquerque and they all did heroin. And they had a little bit of heroin left. And so they said, well, you know, should we give it to the kid? And, and uh, they all said, go ahead. And, and you know, so I think I was about 14, I started doing heroin and hanging around with these guys and I thought I was cool. I went and all my friends, I bragged to them, you know, I did heroin. And they all saw me like a hero because they all wanted to do heroin. They thought it was a in thing to do. Uh, in retrospect, looking back, uh, 
It wasn't, but at the time, uh, I thought it was cool. As I got older and I, a lot of my friends uh, started uh, uh, just to get in trouble, a lot of them uh, started to die uh, young, you know. Uh, I have about four friends that died from drug overdoses and, you know, left in front of the hospital dead or thrown in a dumpster or just, you know, stuff like that that, uh, uh, you know, that's the way it was. And, uh, or going to prison, uh, some of them killed some guy, uh, you know, over drugs and, uh, and ended up going to prison. So I kind of started to uh, fall in love with someone and, and uh, kind of get away from, from the gangs. And, and then I uh, got my uh, wife pregnant and we, you know, we, we were like in love. And uh, that gave me incentive to just stay away from the guys and stay away from people that got me in trouble. And eventually I, I went to school and I, uh, it took me a while, but I graduated from college. And after I, you know, went back to uh, went and, and worked on, on my GED, I uh, and so those were the happiest times in my life. You know, uh, me and my wife would go camping, and I was working, and and you know, bought a house, and I was in my twenties, and I was proud, and felt a lot of uh, self-esteem, and had a car, and and you know, my little. Uh, I had three little girls at the time, and uh, they were so cute, and, and I focused on them instead of focusing on alcohol and drugs. Um, and, and so I also eventually um, got to work f uh, for some important people. I worked for, uh, as a, in, for Congressman Richardson. Uh, I went to uh, Washington, D.C. and worked as an intern. I uh, worked as assistant manager for uh, City of Santa Fe Mayor Sanpik. And I, you know, was like a mover and shaker in the community, well respected. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I uh, dressed in suits and everything was cool. And uh, I started to drink again, and I started to go to bars, and I started to drink and drive, and uh, and things started to change because I uh, ended up getting in trouble while I was drunk and beating up uh, uh, some elderly person in a in a blackout, and so I got arrested and for a felony and. Uh, Lost my job, had to resign. I was in the newspapers, and uh, it was quite embarrassing, you know, for you to be like in the front pages, uh, you know, city manager uh, beats up old person. Uh, it was, and then I lost all my self-esteem, and I just started to, just, you know, I lost my job, and so I just started to drink a lot to kill the pain, and then people in the community. Uh, were, you know, just, um, they lost respect for me. And when they lost respect, I lost respect for myself. I became angry and I started to turn to alcohol and drugs. Uh, and then things got worse. Uh, my wife uh, left me. Um, my older children uh, disowned me. Um, and just just my uh, my younger uh, children, uh, they because I started dealing cocaine, uh, I would give them money, and they uh, you know they 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 adored me, and then eventually I I was so lost in the alcoholism and the drug addiction that I actually started to get high with my kids. You know they were you know like. Uh, 13 and and I think like nine and then eventually they uh, I started to give my kids guns and tell them to you know if anyone try to hurt him 
uh, go shoot up their house and and become violent like I had was becoming, um, you know. And I was, uh, you know, I thought I was the Godfather, you know. I thought I was Al Pacino, you know. I thought I was Scarface, you know. I I uh, wanted to be bad, and uh, and then I got arrested eight times, eight felonies, and I beat six of them, and I thought I was uh, like the Teflon Don, you know. I thought, uh, you know, the cops couldn't uh, catch me and that I was better than, than them, uh, but that all came to an end when I became addicted to cocaine and got busted for trafficking in cocaine. I did not spend any time in prison. I spend a lot of time in jail and I spend a lot of time on probation. And the reason I didn't go to prison is because uh, six of those charges I beat and the other two uh, I still had connections in the community and they felt sorry for me and so they let me be on probation. Uh, but I spent a lot of time in and out of jail um, and very lucky I didn't go to prison. I should have gone to prison. I, I just kind of want to mention that uh, in my family uh, I have lost uh, five brothers and five sisters to alcoholism and drug addiction. Um, my uh, oldest brother uh, got drunk on his birthday. He had quit drinking for nine years and, and started drinking again. Within one year on his birthday, he had to take a taxi. Uh, and on the way that they were taking him, he opened the door, fell out, hit the embankment, and went into a coma and died. Uh, my, uh, uh, my brother that I used to look up to, he died at 33. Uh, he, uh, he vomited and died in his own vomit. Uh, he was a real chronic alcoholic. And um, my uh, sister was uh, 28 years old, and she died from heroin and left four children, and we kind of raised her children. My uh, uh, sister, uh, Mary, she uh, fell in love with some person, and, and he left her, and, and she became so bro brokenhearted that she uh, started drinking vodka and taking pain pills and eventually uh, committed suicide because she died with a broken heart. Uh, my other sister, uh, uh, Vera, she, uh, she was a Catholic, very strong, in the church, sent her kids to Catholic school, and they ended up becoming uh, bikers and getting into cocaine and dealing it, and she eventually stopped praying and joined them, and, she died at, at age 59. She sat down and prayed and spit out her liver uh, because they had given her uh, six months to live. Um, and, and so uh, my, uh, you know, so, so that's three sisters and two brothers. And uh, my other brother, he used to work in the prison. And for 12 years, he, uh, he was a functional alcoholic, but eventually it became obvious that he was drinking on the job. So they asked him to go to treatment, and he said, I'm not gonna give up drinking for no job. So uh, he lost his job and kept drinking. And within a couple of years, he was on disability from so much drinking. He ended up uh, getting in an accident, he, hitting a tractor trailer and uh, and in a wheelchair, and the, the girl he was with, his fiance, got killed. So he got sentenced to prison for vehicular homicide uh, due to a DWI. And um, I took him, and you know, it, it was real sad because he was in a wheelchair. Even in a wheelchair, they send him to prison. And he was a, you know, he was a guard, and now he was a prisoner. And it was so sad, so sad to see that. 
I was on probation. I was very lucky they didn't send me to prison. It was my second felony conviction. But the judge uh, used to know me, the other side of me, and decided to give me another chance. And uh, I found a person, well, you know, first of all, I want to say, how would you like to be my mother? She had to bury five of her kids. And my mother always said, they should bury me. I shouldn't bury her, them. And, uh, you know, and I, I buried my mom about a year ago. And uh, she was such a strong lady for her you know, losing five kids and burying them and going through all that. Um, and then, you know, all that stuff got to me and, and uh, when I got busted for cocaine, I decided to uh, try to go to AA and, and go to church and, and uh, you know, it was very difficult, you know. Uh, I went to church, I went to a Catholic church in the beginning. Uh, and when I went in church, the elders there knew me as a drug dealer and a gangster. And they kept looking at me like, you know, uh, what's he doing here? And then I would walk out the church and my gangster buddies were passing by and they'd all laugh at me. And I felt like, you know, I don't belong here. But uh, there was a loving man in my life, my sponsor, who continued to encourage me, not discourage me. Uh, to learn to forgive myself, to learn that, you know, uh, I didn't have to beat up myself up for what I had put myself through, that uh, that I needed, that there was hope for me, and that I had to, you know, that there was a place for me, and instead of being angry, that I needed to learn to love and be compassionate. And he taught me how to do that. And, you know, after that, I started to go to meetings, became a member of AA, I, I became a born-again Christian and started um, going to church, uh, the gangster churches, you know, in the beginning, and, and then eventually going to Bible studies. And I started to go to the jail and do AA meetings, and uh, I started to uh, do volunteer work for the DWI Impact Panel, which I've done for about, I think, 15 years. Um, I started to work with drug court and and sponsor people in drug court so that they could change their lives around. I, uh, my crack house became a sober house, and it's and I've been clean and sober 16 years, and the house has been open 15. I take homeless people and help them, uh, give them the same hope, the message of hope that I have that we are helpless and hopeless, and and there is, uh, we can change. And, you know, it's a much better life. I, I have my kids back. I, you know, uh, I uh, have a, a, a good job. Uh, I've learned to be humble. Uh, I've learned that I, I don't want to be rich. I just need to help people and, and to trust God and to clean house, which means, you know, go make amends for all the bad things I've done to people. And, make it up the best I can, when I can. Uh, and it's made me feel so good, and it's such a gratifying life. And I don't ever want to go back to drinking and drugging. And uh, I, I feel good because I've helped a lot of people to get uh, sober and clean. Well, God has done that, but you know, I've kind of helped uh, uh, inspire them and encourage them. Uh, but it's really up to uh, if People are not going to get sober unless they want to put the effort. And uh, I feel blessed when I see a lot of these people change their lives. I guess I'll end my story by saying that my name's Juan, and once upon a time there was a guy named Juan who had Juan too many drinks, Juan too many drugs, and uh, and he would go up the wrong way, up the Juan way, and then he was wondering why he was wanted by the police for going up the wrong way, up a Juan way. Today, Juan is not wanted by the police, and he no longer drinks one drink, uh, one day at a time. He knows that there's only one God, and it's not Juan, and everything's wonderful.
My name is Juan, and I've been clean and sober 16 years, and I don't want to go back to that life, and I would like you all to join me.